Do you remember your first song or what you were rapping about back then? Yeah, yes. I got a I got a song called uh I D G A F. Uh it's like it's like I don't like I don't give a fuck. So it was basically like uh I was getting tattoos heavy, so I was like getting my whole body tatted up. So a lot of people like you couldn't get a job back then because you know, if you have too many tattoos, they look at you like, dang, like you got too many tattoos, we can't hire you. So I was just saying like, you know what, I don't give a fuck. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just make a song about it. And then people was like, looking like, dang, like, like, would you a rapper now or something? Why you keep getting too many tattoos? Cause I was working at this little job. I was working at uh, this little job called Vitamix. So it was like, why you keep getting so many tattoos? And at the time, I, I wasn't a rapper at the time. I was just, just like, I love art. So I used to draw a lot. So I just got a lot of tattoos and everything. So I was like, you know what I mean? I don't care, like, I don't care, it's my body. So, you know, that was like my first song, it's called IDGAF, though. Did you indeed have job issues with the tattoos? Nah, I didn't have really too many job issues because me having tattoos, but, like, I heard stories, like, you know, back in the day, like, certain tattoos, they look at you different. Like, if you got a face tattoo, like, people are gonna, like, might, they might not hire you, you know what I'm saying? Like, they might not hire you with a face tattoo, so. I... But no trouble for you at any jobs with your tattoos? Nah, nah, I never had no trouble, no, nah. Now, what age were you at the time when this song was created? Uh, I was about 20, 20 years old, yeah. And were any of those lyrics true at the time? Yeah, they, they was true. It was definitely true. Do you remember how you released that song, your very first one? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was like, people was looking like, oh, you a rapper now, like... <laughs> It was like, oh, you rap. I'm like, yeah, I, I rap, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I came up with it. It, it was it was just kind of catchy. I was good at like like making catchy songs. I, it's normally my thing. I, I like to make something that, that makes sense and that's catchy that can stick with your head so you can remember it. But how'd you release it? CD, mixtape site, SoundCloud? So I, I, I first, I uploaded, I shot the video, I just uploaded it on YouTube. And then I was, I was just creating a buzz and People was asking me like about my tattoos, and that's how I made my Instagram. I was already buzzing on Instagram. It was like, it was like, man, your tattoo is raw, and that's my initials and everything. So it was like, you know, I'm like yeah, raw ink. It was like raw ink. It just went. It just sound good. So I was like, I put it together, and then I just went with it like raw ink. And then I just put the videos out on YouTube, and then it just went up from there. Raw stands for your my first initial, name, middle name, middle and name, last, last name. name. It's my a real name. Like it's not no like fake name. Like I ain't just creating it. It's my government name. Like it's, it's they they know me and everybody like know my name for real. They call me by my real name. Do you and know who? Ink. Do you know who named you? Oh my mom's. <laughs> Thanks my mom. I gotta thank my mom's man. She she blessed me with it. And just for transparency, she is in the room with us today. Yeah, she yeah, she's supporting me. She got all the way down in the ATL, Atlanta. Now, when she named you this by birth, did she name you R-A-W with that intent on purpose? I, I, I honestly I honestly wouldn't even know if she, maybe it, it could be God willing, like maybe maybe it was a purpose from God like to, to, to fulfill what I'm trying to do right now. Well, since she is here, in the room with us, I yeah. might as well just ask her. Yeah. Did you name your son with the intention of having R A W spelling out raw as the initials or no? No, I had um I um when I seen him, uh, his name is Ricardo Antonio Waters. Um, Ricardo is my uncle's name. Antonio is my father's name. And then Waters is his last name. Yeah. So, um, and then, I, but I always used to call, say, you raw, you raw. You know, when he was always creative with his stuff. So, it, that was, turned out to be his nickname. And, and when you said he was raw, you knew those were the initials from his name, or you were just saying that? I was saying it, and then he, <laughs> that's when he'd say, hey, my initials of my is R-A-W. I said, yeah, it is. It fit you. Yeah. I'm blessed. I was blessed with it, you know what I mean? 
I was blessed. This song, your very first song, is it still available for people to listen to if they want to right now? Yeah, so like if you wanted to check me out, you can go to my, my YouTube channel, Raw Ink, and just hit my playlist. I got like 30 videos. You go to Raw Ink Music Videos. Everything's like category perfect. So you could just go and it, it's all categorized in my playlist on my YouTube channel. Including like, your very first song. My first song, first since I first started. Some people might be embarrassed of their first song. They might even take it down, try to hide it. Yeah, you, you know what? I, I, I did do that actually. I, I, I got I got I did that in the beginning because it it just like I got so much better so fast, but I never I took it off my channel, my YouTube channel, but I kept it in the playlist, so it's still under the uh the guy that shot the video. It's on his YouTube channel and I just added to my YouTube like like a playlist of, of my videos. Why do it when you had taken it down initially? Yeah, I, like 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 you said, like sometimes you get you get better and then you do sometimes you look back and be like, dang, like, man, that's that's me. Like I, I sound way better and I, I just don't want people to see it. But I eventually regretted it and I was like, you know, I should have just left it. Like I thought about it, I was like, you know, I should have just left it on my channel. And on YouTube, there are options where you can instead of just deleting a video, yeah. you can set it to private. So it's still part of your account, it's just yeah. publicly hidden. Yeah. But it's not re it's not removed and erased forever. Yeah. Once you delete something that it's, you upload, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And I, you know, it's crazy that you said that. I actually had a, I had I had a video when I was doing it. I was I was so like you know trying to organize it, and I actually I accidentally deleted it. <laughs> I was like, man, it has so many views, and that's what like got me to my first you know my you know the thousand subscribers on YouTube. It's kind of hard to do. So it was my first video, and it was like. I deleted it. So I was like, dang, man, like, I was hurt by it, actually. Were those organic views? Yeah, it was organic. Yeah. Because I used to, back then, Instagram was like the, you know, everybody was on IG, and I was on IG all day, like, I would say, what, 2015? Instagram was that, was that app, for real. It died down a little bit, but Instagram 2015, like, yeah, I was on there heavy, for real. That's what I was promoting on there. Never bought any plays or? Nah, nah. It for what? Like you want to see a real, you want to see real people. At the end of the day, like you buying plays, like you you cheating, you cheating on yourself. Like you're not really taking it serious. Never bought plays. Never bought followers. Nah, uh, -uh. nah. It, it's no point in doing that. Like it's like cheating on yourself. What about paying for ads? Ever done that before? Uh, I I actually did on Facebook. I ran uh, I was running Facebook ads, and those ads was good, but I end up. I over on Facebook, so like it, they end up like taking my uh, Facebook page down. So it was, it was pretty bad for. Her. Because you owed him some money. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Why didn't you take care of that bill? Man, it it was like I was running it so crazy. It was like I was just running it. I wasn't thinking that I was gonna be in a hole like that. So I just kept going, and my page was getting a lot of likes, and I I made a payment on it some of it and then I just never really made the rest of the payment I guess exactly on time and then they just deleted the whole thing that was a that was the first time I tried to ask though so it, it it did have some good results so actually if you I mean is that something you could still pay for and get your page back or is that so I, old I, and done with I think that once 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 they delete your your page I think you it's over with on, on as far as Facebook and everything no way to get it reactivated. Yeah, I don't or think anything. you can get it reactivated at it once it's gone. Like it's out of here. Like, is that a, an assumption, or you just you actually no, try? not because I, I try to like make another account and they like remembered it because I try to make another one with my same name and they just deleted that one too. Like they just they they you gotta pay Facebook. So if y'all out there, y'all running ads, make sure y'all pay for the ads. Like learn from my mistakes. Like pay for the ads for real. So at this point, do you have a Facebook page at all? No, I don't even got a Facebook. No, I just work YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Spotify. Now, what was the reaction to your very first song back then? Oh, I, I was excited, man. Cause just being in the studio, creating, just being able to cre hear yourself on the mic, it was just crazy. Cause I was like, I, my first dream was basketball, and I, I you know, I'm twice. 
I used to play basketball all on the course and, and, and on the west side of Cleveland. Everybody know me, I used to just play everywhere. And then when I got into the music thing, it was like, you know what? See, basketball is different. You got to have scouts. It's a little harder. Like, it's really hard to get to the NBA. But with music, it's up to you. So I was like, you know what? I know this music thing. I can really take off with it because as long as I stay focused on what I'm trying to do, it's going to elevate and I can watch my growth. So I was like, yeah, that's that's why I knew. I was like, yeah, music is, is for me. So how far did you get with basketball? Basketball, I, I got to about high school and then I end up, I, I got end up having a, a child. I got a son, so um, it, it didn't go far after that, after high school. Teen but father? Teen father. My son right here. So it was, after that, it's it time to grow up, you know? Teen parent? Yup, teen parent. What age were you when that happened? Uh, about 18, yeah. And you were still in school? Yep. At still, the time? Yep, still in school. Uh, the year of your graduation? Yep, yep, still in school, about to graduate and everything. Um, I ended up, what happened was I ended up going, I was in high school, but I got kicked out. Um, I, I got into, you know, some trouble. I got fighting and everything, and I got kicked out my 12th grade year, and I ended up going to job court. On the, on the east side of Cleveland. And, and then from there, I ended up meeting my, um, my BM and everything. And then I was playing basketball at the time and I was traveling, was, was undefeated and everything. And then I ended up having the kids, so I, I just stopped playing. I just was like, I gotta, I gotta do this now. That's life though, you know? So you actually quit during the season? Yeah, I, I, it was like, I lost the motivation and everything for it after that. Were you doing varsity at the time? Yeah, varsity, yep. Were you a starter at the time? Yeah, of course, yeah. I was def I was like one of the tallest players on the team. Like, so, yeah. What position was this? A uh, small four. And what jersey number did you have? 30. And that was a number you picked or you were given? Uh, It, it was just a number they just gave me for real, though. I didn't, I didn't get to pick it though. And this was junior year or senior year? Senior. I played I played junior and senior though. When I was in before the other before I went to job corps, I played junior there, and then I went to job corps and played senior. So, when you actually have this child, uh, you were in job corps at that point. Yeah. Yep. I I had to get up. I had to go to work from there. After that, my life was like get a job, take care of my responsibilities. I was, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't even doing music at the time. I was just, I was in a relationship. Like it, it was just like Similac, Milk. I don't know if you have a kid, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of responsibilities up front for, for a teenager too, get a place, get a car. It was just a lot going on at that time. Now, when it came to Job Corps, you graduate from that? Yeah, I did graduate, yep. On time? Yeah, yep. And uh, does that Job Corps have a name to it? Yeah, it's called Cleveland Job Corps. It's on Coy Row on the east side. It's on 140th. Everybody know, if y'all from Cleveland, y'all know East 140th. It's on St. Clair. It's on the east side of Cleveland, yeah. What was the name of the high school you were expelled from? Uh, Lincoln West. <laughs> Lincoln West. It was on the, That's on the west side. So like Cleveland got two different sides. So, you know, the west side, it got its own little section in the east side. So I was in the school in the west side and then I ended up had to go to the east side and go to school. But Cleveland, so like, it's the same city, but it's two different sides. Like, it's like a whole different atmosphere on the west and east side. Like, this is completely different. And just to be a little bit more uh, clear, you get expelled your junior year or your senior year? Oh, my senior year, yep. Okay. Like 12th grade year. So. I actually, it's crazy because I don't know if you know about life skills, but I had to go. I had to go to life skills right after that to get a couple credits, and then I went to job corps. But while I was at life skills, life skills is like a computer thing. Like it, it was so boring. I was like, I gotta go to. I gotta figure something out. I gotta get my diploma. I was motivated to get my diploma. Like I, I really wanted to get it because not so many people in my family had it. So I was like, I wanted to get it, and then I went to job corps from there. Now, when you find out 
for the first time you're having a child, yeah. uh, how'd you actually find out yourself? Uh, I, I mean, I, we was together, so, you know, it was not so hard. We was together after, this is what happened. We were supposed to, I, I'm thinking like, cause she, when you were in Job Corps, there's people in different areas coming to that area. She wasn't even from my city. She was from Columbus. That was like two hours away. So I'm thinking we was gonna be done after this, but now nah, we we just continue to stay together. And then from there, we was together and we had the baby. So it was like, I knew, you know what I'm saying? You know, the baby was coming for sure, because I know what I did. Not a surprise to you. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, not a surprise. When it came to your parents, how did you tell them if you told them or how did they find out? Oh, I, I just I just told my mom's like, you know, you know, I got I got a kid on the way and everything. It's like it was it was just that's it. But I knew from there, like I had it from there. I, I, I still I'm a man now. You know, all that kid stuff when you that go out the window once you have a child, you know, what I mean, it's different. It's a different ball game. Before it was like, all right, you can kind of get away with just, you know, being a teenager and everything, but once you have a kid, it's like, nah, it's it's go time now from here. How'd you actually tell her? Uh, I mean, I just been straight up. Me and my mom, we had a good relationship, so we just we just talked about it like it's like my best friend. What was her reaction? She was happy for me. She was cool. She wasn't tripping. Yeah. Was she surprised at all? Nah, I don't, I don't think she was surprised. She she was she might have been surprised. I don't know. Yeah. Well, since she's in the room with us, yeah. were you surprised? Yes. <laughs> Anytime you're going to be a grandmother, you're, you're surprised. Yeah. I was surprised. I can't speak for her. I don't know. So that's, yeah, I that's was a surprised. Surprise. Uh, uh, I already had one granddaughter, so I was excited. And now I, he told me I, that a baby was going to come. Yeah. And I was just overjoyed. Man. Now, were you a teen parent yourself or no? Yes. You were? Yes. Okay. So, knowing that you were a teen parent and now you have your son being a teen parent, what were you thinking? I probably think differently because I'm adopted, so I don't have a lot of people that look like me. So by me having a uh, someone that's gonna have my blood, my identity and all that, I was super excited. So I and now glory to God, I have seven grandkids. But just the fact that the equation here, you were a teen parent once, mm -hmm. now your own child's a teen parent, did that worry you based on your own experience? Just curious there. No, it didn't really worry me because he has an older brother. And I just figured with the right support, my mom, as a teen parent, she she supported me all the way to she, she left the surf. So she showed me by example, you know, where we're, we come in this world, we don't know our destinies. So if that's the destiny that happened, I'm gonna support it. I'm not gonna be angry because I made a lot of mistakes myself. Mm. Now, let's say somebody's watching this interview mm -hmm. and they're a teen parent. Yeah. They just found out the news they're about to be one or maybe they've just had their child and right. they're going through it. Yeah. Uh, circumstances could be different for everybody. Yeah. What do you say to somebody watching this in either one of those shoes, generally speaking here? Okay. Well, if, if you're a teen parent, like, don't, don't, don't ever regret it. Like, people, don't, they get, they be regretting because they're too young and everything. Sometimes that make you stronger in life because, you know what I'm saying? The way it is, you, you can't control how, how destiny is. If God wants something for you to do and, and if it's meant to be, don't, don't, don't look at it like a mistake. Just hand up. You're gonna have to handle your situation though. If you're a teen, you're gonna have to, you know, quickly get get some work, get a job, you know, get you stack some money up, get a car. With me, with the job corps, they already they give you a check 
like when you when you pass, so they give you like twelve hundred. So I got my car right away. I got me a little job. Got me a little apartment. Boom. You just gotta you gotta move different. You gotta move fast. That's it. So you know I would say just just try to you know handle your responsibilities, man. That's life. It's life. Really. Ain't really nothing. Ain't really nothing else to talk about about that. You gotta handle it because you can't just be out here just letting somebody else handle what you just did. I, you know what I'm saying? And just for clarification, uh, I know this wasn't a surprise to you. Mm-hmm. Were you planning for a child? Did you? You know, you know what's crazy, man. Smalls, I, I had a lot of stuff going on in my life at that time, man. Just growing up in the streets, of, you know, from Cleveland, it, it was just so bad that it was just like, for me, I felt like having a child would slow my life down with so much going on. And I honestly felt like that was like a gift. Like it was like, it just brought more, more me closer to to, to want to be alive more, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes life we get lost and we just gotta find ourselves. We gotta find our purpose, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes kids can really do that. Like my mom's here right now with me. So, you know, it goes to show like, she, a kid can motivate you to actually come out here and do something in life. So just for clarification, did you plan on this? Did you do this on purpose? I, yeah, I, I probably, I probably did plan it though. I probably because I, I knew I wanted to be with her at that time. When I was younger, I was like, yeah, I wanted to be with my um, BM at that time. Now, when it comes to the first song. Mm. What was people's reaction to that song? Man, it was crazy, man. It was like, people was like, I actually, I had, it. W- it I, I know you said the first song. The first song wasn't that, wasn't, it was crickets. The first song, it was like, they was like, people, I was rapping it, I was rapping it like everywhere before I made the song. So I was getting people ready. And it was like, uh, you know, when you rapping to somebody, you know, like they, they don't want to see you rapping to somebody. They want to see the video. They want to see, who shot the video? Who produced it? They 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 want to see the, the the mid and gritty. So at first I was just going around just rapping it to them, and then when I put it out, it was like yeah, oh shit, that look hard. So it, it it didn't get too much reaction. Not the first one. I ain't gonna say the first one wasn't too crazy. Did your parents hear the uh, first song? Yeah, yeah, I think she yeah, she heard the first song. Your mother? Yeah, yeah. What mom. was her reaction to it? She the very she, first song. She uh she liked it. She liked it. What did she think about the lyrics? Oh, it is. See, see the lyrics. Here, it was just it was just bad words. When I when I so it was, I'm pretty sure she ain't probably like that. I don't think she would like the bad words, but that's just that's just what it was at the time, man. Well, it's a lot of thinking here with some of these answers. Since she's right here, let's just ask her straight up. So the very first song, do you remember what he's talking about and what he's referencing here? Yes. What was your initial reaction when you heard it? Um, I, I like his talent, but I don't cuss. I don't really like none of that type of words and the message. So um, I don't know if you the other music, so constantly talking, he, he grew from there. But just that very first song. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> like <laughs> I wasn't ready for all that. I had a, I had, I also, like I said, I already had my granddaughter and also thinking about other children and other people listening to it. Um, it's not just what you rap, it's the message behind it. So, and we had to talk about that and the growth slowly came in. Now, when it came to the cussing, did he already cuss in front of you before you heard the song? Were you already used to that? Either him cussing or cussing in front of you, or was that a shock? I mean, I knew he cussed, but not in front of me. I knew he cussed, you know, behind Crow in his bedroom or in conversation mm-hmm. and stuff. But uh, he's always been respectable, so he he's never done it in front of me. Yeah, I show respect, you know what I mean? Show my mom, you know what I mean? 
Now, for time reference, it's show, excuse me, it's August 2021 now. Uh, How have you grown since that very first song? Oh man, I, tremendously, tr- tremendously. It's 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 a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indifferent realm at, at this point. You know what I'm saying? My life is it's not even that like like that no more. Cause back then I used to, you know, I used to smoke. I used to drink. Uh, I was just doing whatever whatever my friends did. So it was whatever or, or other or other musicians that I listened to, copying and them wasn't even being myself, man. It was just it was just bad. So now I'm I'm more myself. I don't smoke, I don't drink. Uh, it's just like completely it's different. It's more spiritual music now. So I try to do more things that that's meaningful that can actually heal you or heal somebody that going through something. What led to you stopping and drinking? Uh, so, so uh, I had a situation. Um, um, basically, on my dad's side, that's my mom's. But I didn't know on my dad's side. I didn't really know my dad's like that. And he passed away, um, 2018. And uh, I ended up going going to like my uncles and everything on that side of the time. So, basically, I didn't really, you know, what I mean, know my my dad's side of the family. So, um, me me smoking and drinking and stuff. Um, my 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 family. I, I ended up got my, my weed laced and everything. So and I ended up getting fentanyl on my weed. And then from there, I knew that could have killed me. So I was like, you know what? That That's when I was like, you know what? It stops here. Like, I'm not going to put myself in that situation because I let myself I let myself get there. So if I wasn't smoking, I would have never hit it. But since I was doing that, it got in my system, I could have died. And that, that that from there, it just changed me completely. And then that's when I feel like I found God from there. I felt like Jesus walked into my life after that. So let's break a few elements down here. Okay, this person that actually passed, what family member was this specifically? It's my blood dad. Okay, your Bi- biological father? Biological father, yeah. Okay, and you didn't know him? No, nah, I only seen him like two, three times in my life. And why was that? He, he he was he was on he was on crack he was a drug addict and he just he he just couldn't he couldn't handle it like he left at when I was two and you know he just that's the deal he's had the eighties crack that was that was the thing it's like you get on crack it's over with and I think his mom was on crack and she was persuading him to do it so it's not you know maybe it might not have been his fault that's just the, the, the this hand he had, it was dealt to him and. He just wasn't in the picture in my whole life. How did he actually end up passing away, if you don't mind me you know, asking? You know what's crazy? I think he died from, from fentanyl. Yeah, he died from that. He died right on the street, on a curve. Let's ask your mother, is this true? Yes. He sniped on, in, on Euclid. Um, they found him on the street. Uh, he had passed away. And his aunt later on, when they did the the family one at an autopsy, and then later on, I, I found out that it was a fentanyl overdose. Seriously, that's 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 a serious serious drug right there. Now back then, when you were smoking and drinking, what did you actually smoke back then? Uh, just, just weed, like you know, just the normal the normal weed. Everybody smokes weed, and when they when they go in the studio, it's kind of like it's like it's almost like a thing you do to get in a studio to help you create. So it was just friends that come around, smoke. We make music like that's just it's just a normal thing for real. Like it's not like some people still do. It's not like it's a problem. It's just you just gotta be careful. You know what I mean? What were you drinking back then? Uh, I I I wasn't really big on drinking, but I just drink like Ciroc, something like that. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing too crazy for real. Liquor. Yeah, just simple liquor for real. So, do you know who actually laced this I, this, this instance? I honestly, of you I, I can't, I can't identify who it did, but I kind of know who probably would have did it. So I wouldn't say who who did it, but I I kind of know who did it, and and you know what I'm saying that I'm gonna just keep it that, like that for real. It was a family member. Yeah, it was definitely for sure a family because it, it happened. While I was around my family. Now, did they do that on purpose? Lace I, it. I mean, it could have. It could have been. It could have been purposely for sure. Yeah. 
I think, because uh, they end up finding out about me through music. So maybe it was something that they wanted to do, you know. So just for a little bit more clarification, this person who laced it, they were lacing a blunt that was going to get passed around and everybody was going to touch or was just specifically, specifically for you? for me. It was, it was handed to me, lace. Nobody else was passing, passing it. It was just, and I took it. Now, I know you think you know who did it. Uh, did you ever confront them about it? Nah, I never, I never, I never did that. Cause from there, I end up going to like mental homes and stuff. So it, it got serious, you know. From there, police they called the police on me afterwards, and they made it. They point the finger at me, made it seem like I was the problem. When the whole time I'm getting set up, so it was crazy for. Real. You were the problem of this particular incident, of the blunt being laced, or, or no? No, I was not the problem at that time. I was just saying in general, like, something might have, you know, for them to do that, it was just like, it, I, I became a problem after I got it, it got in my system. That's when it was like, okay, here you go, come get him. You know what I mean? Like, stranded. You mean that particular night you smoked? That that night I smoked, yeah, and then after that, you know, they called the police, and then boom. Oh, I was okay. Out of there. The fentanyl um, messed with his brain, so he wasn't in his awareness, so he was act acting real strange. So yeah. the people called the police on him. Mm -hmm. But the the family actually set him up because they looked and, and seen he was a rapper, bless him Lord. They took his car, they took his identity, and they left him completely with nothing on the street of Columbus. And then they picked him up because they, they, he had no ID, no nothing. So, and then... No, they ain't picked me up. So, uh, my remember my yeah my. they picked you that uh when i went down there you would i had to pick you i mean i had to yeah pick you me. had to pick me up I you had to you pick them oh, up okay from yeah. but uh the doctors told me that and this will happen what year this 2019 2019 like a couple years ago. that they didn't think he would recover if he would recover, it would be probably more than three years because of the amount of fentanyl. And this is his girl since. So yeah. add a little, shed a little more light here. What do mm. you mean you wouldn't be the same three years from now? I mean, were you brain dead or something from this uh, situation? So yeah, I was going through a lot. Like I was going outside, walking in like midnight, just walking outside. And I got, I was walking out for so long that I the police got me for trespassing. Cause you know, I was walking, I was, I had to go to jail for three days. And I felt like I was about to die in there cause I ain't had no food. It was just crazy. Like, it felt like a movie. It just didn't seem real. So it was just like, my life was, it, 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 it was, I, I was at a dark time in my life. So I'm a little confused here. Okay. okay, so this initial time you smoked this, it was a blunt, right? Yeah. A laced blunt mm. with fentanyl yeah. in it. Uh, this happens, you smoke it, yeah. you ingest it, and then that's when they take your car, your ID, they bounce, they leave you in the street, mom comes, picks you up some kind of way. Yeah. Uh, and, but the police were called that night as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep, you got it. So she comes and gets you before the police do? No, I, I, I still had to sit in that mental home for months before she could, could, could get me because they was trying to keep me in there. Okay, so the police actually end up picking you up that night. Yeah, they picked me up that night. For and trespassing? No, no, no. You talk, they, they, when they called the police, they called the police on me after I was drugged, and then they called the police on me, and then I went to the mental home. After... I got out, 
I still wasn't okay. I still was, I came back to Cleveland when she got me. And then I was in Cleveland outside doing stuff like, Ah, uh, this what was saying? another episode. Yeah, okay. I was having episodes. You see what I'm saying? Like okay. that different periods mm -hmm. of times. It, it it was a lot, and I was going in and out of them, in like five hospitals. Like it's a, it was crazy. All because of this one incident. This one incident. One incident. That's all it takes one time. Serious. It's a serious thing. Now, I know this is an assumption here. You never confronted the person who you think did it, but what would have been the point to lace you? Was I mean, it just to have some fun with you? Was yeah, it? Yeah, because it, it was. It, I, I sent plenty of times. It was pranking, putting stuff in my drink, uh, the, the 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 diarrhea stuff in my in my soda. So it was it was leading up to that. It was just little stuff that I was I was catching, and then the last final straw was that, and then boom, I was out of there. Police was called. I went out. Every when I was out there, all my stuff was gone. I stu I had a studio, my clothes, my money, my car. Everything was gone, and I, I I came back to Cleveland with nothing. Like I ain't have nothing out of out of rebuild. So that's where I'm at right now, rebuilding still. And you said this was friends and family that did this to you, this or just is strictly family, blood family, like from my dad's side, his brothers and stuff like that. And, and you didn't really know that side. of I the family. never met him in my life. Besides that time, I went to, you know, when he passed away. That was the first time I seen him. Right, but on his side of the family, you weren't Never. really too uh, familiar. Familiar. Yeah, no, nah, I, 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 I was, I didn't know him. No, never had talked to him. Never seen him. None of that. So it was, it was, it was different. But this is where I'm confused now, because mm -hmm. you said there were things leading up to it, like little pranks yeah. with the soda and stuff like that. So yeah, that that all happened that same night. Or no, no, there was different days, different times, and then eventually. That final day was just like boom. And so you were getting familiar with the the his side of the family. A yeah, because I was living there, I was living there, I was living there, and, and so it was like every day, you know, something different. Ah, yeah. It's now, staying. I can understand these pranks leading up, mm. you know, to this being a bigger or more serious prank, but just them taking. The car, the identification, the clothes, and all that—I don't understand that part. That—that—that's a—that's a mystery for me too. It's like, why would somebody do that, especially your family? And that's why it scarred me so bad that I put it all in the music. I got a song called "Pain," and it, I explain it in depth exactly what it is, you know. And if you go on YouTube, you—you'll see it's on my on my on my on my trailer. On my YouTube is the first song you see on my channel. Go listen to that. Like it's, it's it's it tells exactly what I'm saying in this in this interview, and I didn't want to say it right here, but I want y'all to go listen to that if you if you really want to know what happened. And do you also explain why there was no confrontation in that song or? No, I I I I leave that out to God. There's no there's no reason there's no reason for me to go back and forth, cause it's all in God's hands after that. You feel me? It goes right back up. Now, when it came to you quitting smoking and drinking and things of that nature, mm -hmm. was that the flip of a light switch? Was that instant? Uh, it actually was because you know what's crazy? Like, I never been a leader. I mean, not a leader. I've never been a follower, so I always been a leader. So it was something that I knew I could do. By the time, I didn't want people like to look at me different. But when that happened, I was like, I don't even care what people think anymore. This is me. You feel me? Like I'm, I'm cool with it. Like, I don't, ha I don't have to fit in with everybody. I, I rather stand out. You know, it's best to stand out than fit in with everybody that just doing the same thing, talking about the same thing. Like it, it get old. Like you, go, you, go, you could choose in life. Like you can, you can make a change, or you could just leave it the same how it is. And I, I was like, you know what, I gotta make a change with myself. And that was something that I wanted to do to prove to myself that I can do it, you know what I mean? Did you ever end up relapsing at all with smoking or drinking after you do quit? Uh, nah, I have a relapse, but you do get friends to keep reminding you, like, hey, what's up? Like, you trying to hit this? Come on, man. Like, you know, people try to get you back into that. 
Peer pressure. Peer pressure, yup. So you in the studio, boom, boom, come on. And then eventually it got to the point where I, I kept saying, no, 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 that they know now. They just like don't even, they don't even acknowledge to ask me because they, oh, no, he don't even do that no more. He don't even do it. So I even seen people stop doing it to themselves. I, I, I seen people that they, they stopped doing it too. And they life been better. Like they've been way more on point with their life, the way they function, the way they awake. It's it's so it's so vivid and clear now that it's amazing to see that it changed. Do you explain why to people you don't partake, or are you just telling them no, no thanks? No, I I tell them my testimony. This is like something that I feel like I just tell them like you know what this happened to me. This is why I don't do it. I leave it on the table. You know what I mean? How long have you been clean from smoking and drinking at this point? It's been about two years. So 2019, 2020, 2021, so that's two years. What have you noticed health-wise since you stopped smoking and drinking? Oh, I even eat better. Like I've been eating fruits, vegetables, and stuff, little stuff that I never would have never tapped into. I tapped into now this year and last year. So... I eat better, drink better. I feel I feel like younger. Like I feel like I'm like 18 again. Like I feel good now. Yeah. Care to share your age at this point? Yeah, I'm 28. So you feel like you're 10 years younger. Yeah. And when you did smoke and you did drink, were you addicted to this back then, or was it just something you were doing socially? Uh, I, 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 I would say I would say it was socially because I would do it on the weekends and stuff. It wasn't like an addiction where I needed it every day. It was just something that it, I want to make some music. I need to, I need to have that. You know what I mean? Looking back, when you did smoke that laced blunt mm. of marijuana, do you think this could have been prevented at all? And and when I say prevented, I, I don't mean. Uh, well, I guess you could have seen them if you really wanted to make the blunt. Mm. Um, and I don't think you did, I'm assuming here. No, no, I didn't see it. You I didn't, didn't see, see them roll it? No, nah, they, they, they didn't roll it and they gave it to me. So it okay. Like, but uh, uh, could this have been prevented in the sense that, I mean, obviously, if you saw them roll it or you rolled your own, mm. then you could have prevented it that way. Yeah. I would assume. But let's say you didn't, you weren't able to. In this case, you didn't. Mm. You didn't roll it yourself, and somebody rolled it, and you didn't see him roll it. Just taking your first puff of this, did you sense something was odd? Did it taste different to you? Did it smoke different to you? Or there was no way you would have known it was laced until after things mentally start happening to you? I didn't know it was laced until I went to the mental home. That's when they took confirm confirmed it. So I would have never knew. It smoked and it smelled yeah. and it tasted just like it's normal. Just, it just like it was normal. It felt like it was not even. It didn't have no special effect. I didn't have a. It just it just felt like it was normal, until they tell me they gave me the results and say, "Oh, this is what it is." I said, "Oh, okay." Ah, right, now I see what's going on, because I never bought it. So I was like, I know I ain't buy it, and I know, you know what I mean, where I got it from. So I'm like, okay, I see what's going on. Have you fully recovered from the uh, lacing in this incident? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fully recovered from, you know, all that. I feel, I feel good, but I'm not fully mentally recovered from hearing family do something to you like that. So that mentally broke me down a little, because I got a lot of trust issues now. Have you had any professional help mentally with this? No, I, 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 I would say my, I. Would, God will be my professional help. I, I tap in with my spiritual side now. That's been getting me through the day reading. Do you need professional help mentally with this at all? Nah, nah, nah. At this point, I done, I done made that. I done made it through that hurdle. I done made it through all the, the dark times. I done took them walks. I done been in in and out of jail, five hospitals. Like, I, I, don't, I already went through all that. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm straight now. And when it comes to the five hospitals, can you explain 
and break that situation down? Why five hospitals and that sort of thing? I mean, I wouldn't know about the number. It was just, it's just, I kept going in and out. I was having, I was having like a, how, how do you want to call it? Like a, a take your time, like a episode. So it was like different times. It was, it wasn't like I was thinking nothing crazy, like dark. It was just some things that I was doing that was out of the norm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, put it like this. You go out, and I've been, I'm walking out here in Atlanta, right? There's people, there's homeless people outside. You know, you, you probably got prostitutes, strippers, whatever. What You don't know their life. And the first thing people do is judge them off rip. Oh, don't give that man no money. Oh, don't give him no change. Or, oh, he can't eat. They laughing at him. But not knowing deep down, you don't even know what this person been through. Like, this person probably was laced, got crack in their system. They outside at night. You don't even know their lifestyle. So I was out there with them. So I was, you know, I was like, it was normal. But at that time, it wasn't normal, but it was like, I was like, okay, I'm out here. It wasn't that bad. I wasn't thinking like I was scared and then like I'm out here at night. It just was like, I see people out. It was people outside. It just, you know, it's a different life. It's a dark, it's a dark life. So when you would go to these hospitals, you were taken against your will to this hospital or you voluntarily? So, some, sometimes I, I, I was, my moms would take me and stuff because I wasn't feeling right and I needed to go. And they, they do have like therapy things there. They try to help you and people can do like color and you know, little stuff like that. And they try to talk positive and stuff like that. You know, it, it, that might've helped a little bit because I still remember it. So it leads into where I'm at now to still talk about it. So it did kind of help for real. Anything else um, I didn't ask you? People want to know about fentanyl or having a lace blunt or I, I pretty much asked you all the questions I could think of about the whole scenario. Is there yeah. anything I didn't ask people want to know about the situation or you want to fill I, any I, loose ends about it or I, I feel like you, you you asked everything you need to ask, but I feel like I just wanna just say a message to somebody that is is just pay attention to your surroundings, man. That's what I wanna say is stay awake, don't be sleep. Cause somebody just because you might be doing a good watch your friends, watch watch you gotta watch people because just because they're around you and they're cool and they're smiling, they want to be around around you, other rappers, anybody, don't mean they really down for you. They probably really want to see you gone, and they want to take what you got and be in your spot. So you got to really pay attention to what you're doing. That's why I say, you don't, I'm not saying you don't have to smoke a drink, but just learn from what I just said in this interview. Like, it's serious out here. It's, it's 2021. There's so much going on, the pandemic. Coronavirus, there's so much stuff going on. You just gotta stay focused and don't be distracted about anything else that's leading in you in the wrong direction. So, like, and what age did this whole situation take place? Uh, I was about like 25, 26. Yeah.